Hello guys, welcome back to Civil Engineers YouTube channel. Today in this video lecture, I will discuss some basic knowledge for civil engineers to remember on site. Guys, this topic is very useful for civil engineering students. So you should remember these points and these useful basics which I am telling you in this video. Let's start guys. The topic is some basic knowledge for civil engineers to remember on site. Also for non-civil engineer, it's very important. First of all, first basic point is related with soil bearing capacity. Guys, bearing capacity of soil should not be less than for the required design load, especially for building construction. Guys, most of the people they don't know the bearing capacity of the soil that what is the bearing capacity of soil they don't know well, that in which you are making construction because uh, you don't know that what type of soil is that in which you are making construction so therefore first of all if you want to make a good structure okay so for that you need to find the bearing capacity of soil because we have different types of soil and different types of soil has different bearing capacity so therefore guys bearing capacity of soil bearing capacity of soil should not be less than required design load how if the bearing capacity of the soil is very low and you design a structure on that soil so of course it will be fail after some time because it can make settlement due to low bearing capacity right for example how if the bearing capacity of the soil is for example if sbc this is just example remember example okay for example if sbc soil bearing capacity of uh, bearing capacity of the soil is 5000 kilonewton 5000 kg for example per meter square if this is the bearing capacity of soil 5000 kg per meter square and the design load is for example if the design load is design load our required load if that is guys 10,000 kg per meter square so the foundation will be fail because the design load is 10,000 kg per meter square and SBC soil bearing capacity is 5,000 kg per meter square so what do you think about this so therefore bearing capacity of the soil should not be less than required design load so we should put what uh, factor of safety that should be minimum 1.5 time okay how for example if the design load is 10,000 kg per meter square so the soil bearing capacity should be minimum 25,000 kg per meter square so this should be the bearing capacity of soil if the design load is design structure load is which apply on the soil which transfer to the soil if that is what 25,000 uh, okay if that is 10,000 kg per meter square design load or structure load per meter square and the soil bearing capacity should be not less than 25,000 kg per meter square because we should keep the what factor of safety otherwise you will face the problem so the bearing capacity of soil should not be less than required design load otherwise you will face the problem so if the bearing capacity of the soil is 10,000 kg per meter square and the structure load is also 10,000 kg per uh, meter square so you will face more problems after completion of construction so therefore the bearing capacity of the soil should be maximum from the design or structure load 
right got it the point or not this is the main point second guys plinth level of construction plinth level of house okay so the plinth level remember guys that the plinth level the plinth level should be sixty to eighty centimeter okay the plinth level should be sixty to eighty centimeter from the from natural ground level due to flood due to rainy water etc so guys the plinth level of house construction should be minimum 60 to 80 percent from the natural ground level for example if you can see this is the ground level this is the ground level so guys the plinth level of the house should be minimum with the height of 60 to 80 centimeter from the ground level natural nsl natural ground level right so this is also very important now guys the third point is also dpc dam proof course okay to protect the moisture from the foundation so guys the dpc concrete grade should be minimum m15 which is one two four to make concrete for dpc construction it should not be less than m15 so we will make a concrete in one to four ratio one is cement two is sand and four is aggregate for dpc with the thickness of minimum with minimum one inch thickness one inch thickness minimum one inch thickness it should not be less than one inch so normally two inch thickness of the dpc is quite safe okay this is the other point now guys the other basic point is also especially for seven engineers to remember on site what is the safe distance between two rcc columns many students because guys first of all i will tell you there isn't any limit in this because it's depend on the structure load it's depend on the structure design etc so we can't say that the limit is that distance between two rcc column okay but are the length between two rcc column but five meters remember five meter distance between two columns is quite safe okay five meter distance between two columns is quite safe so you can keep the distance between two columns sorry this is one column and this is other column right so guys the five meter distance is quite safe but if you want to increase the distance between two columns so you will increase the size of the column the size of the beam also the thickness of the slab etc so it's depend on the structure design but up to five meter distance between two rcc column is quite safe but remember guys the grade with with minimum m20 grade concrete minimum with m20 grade concrete where the ratio of m20 grade concrete is one 
1.53 where 1 is cement 1.5 is sand and 3 is crush or aggregate guys this is the other point fifth guys this is related with beam as you can see guys this is the beam long section about related with stirrup guys here the first stirrup the first one stirrup the first stirrup and beam should be placed with a minimum two inch distance okay first first stirrup should be placed minimum with two inch distance so other it's depend on the structural design and it's also depend on the uh, shear stresses etc but the first also from each side the first stirrup should be placed minimum with two inches the other one if there is uh, uh, the limit for example if there is four inch six inch or seven inches seven inch so i don't want to say uh, something new in this because it is depend on the shear stresses also it's depend on the structure load etc structural design but the first one stirrup should be placed minimum with the two inch distance this is the other point now guys in basic knowledge the sixth one is also okay guys this is also related with uh, also i have uh, yes about development length okay so guys and beam development length here guys you can see i will erase this okay so guys you can see here this is the long section of the beam beam long section okay so guys we have here also here this is one column and this is other column right guys here we have the steel bars like this okay so guys you can see this is the steel bar here the steel is bent to the downside guys this is called development length this is called ld this is development length so what should be the length of minimum length of development length okay development length and also this one will be going to the also downside and here this steel bar should be going to the upward side this is the okay so what should be the length of development okay so what should be development length distance so development length development length should not be less than 12d 12d so the development length should be minimum with 12d where d is die of steel bar this die of steel bar d for example if the die of the steel is if die of steel is for example if the die of steel is uh, 25 25 millimeter okay so how you can get the how you can get a length of development length so 12 multiply 25 okay so it will become what minimum about 225 millimeter about okay so this should be sorry to about 300 mm okay so it become guys for example if this is one inch if the dia of the steel is one inch so 12 multiply one the d is a die of steel bar right so there we require 12 inch 
development length. So the development length should be 12 inch. So the formula is 12 D. So guys, this is some important and basic knowledge for civil engineers, which I have discussed the front of you, but this is very useful. Bearing capacity of soil, plant level, DPC, thickness, and also uh, its grade of concrete. Also the distance between quite uh, a safe distance between two RCC column, first stirrups and development length. So guys, if you have any question about this video, so you can comment, I will try to reply your answer. Thanks for watching. See you in next video. Goodbye.